Here at Crosswinds, we're on a journey to discover who God created us to be. Lord, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for your anointed word that speaks to our heart, that transforms us, that changes us, and gives us life. Lord, may your word find good soil in the hearts of every person that will hear it today. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, I haven't, if I haven't met you yet, I'm Pastor Jordan. Welcome Crosswinds Online. And today we're talking about overshadowed by glory, the promised son. I want to take you back to 3 BC. The place was the nation of Israel. And God's people are living in poverty and oppression. The land is occupied and controlled by the Romans. They're heavily taxed. They're mistreated day after day. And the quality of life is far less than pleasant. Yet worse than their physical poverty is their spiritual condition. For thousands of years, Israel have been trying so hard to live right before the Lord. And his standard of holy living was provided through the law of Moses. So this was the Ten Commandments, right? And also 600 other regulations that they had to try and follow to live holy. Yet time and time again, the people fell short. God raised up judges and kings, you know, great leadership, but they still failed. He'd speak through priests and prophets, but nothing and no one could solve their ongoing sin problem. Yet before the stable, before the shepherds, before Mary and Joseph, even before Moses, you know what there was? A promise. A promise given by God to Abraham. And God said to Abraham that all the nations of the earth would be blessed by one of his descendants. It's called the seed of Abraham. And this seed of Abraham would be none other than God's only son. He came to break the curse of sin once and for all. In English, we call him Jesus, yet his Hebrew name is pronounced Yeshua, which means God is salvation. He is the son of promise. He is the true source of blessing. I know you know it. And he is the only name by which we are saved. Aren't you thankful for that promise? So we're going to talk about it today. We're going to study how the promised son came into the world and broke the power of sin as we head into December, the Christmas season. Stay with me. Let's look at it. Number one, Christ was conceived in glory by the Holy Spirit. This is the the genesis of the Christmas story here, okay? So we're going to go to our first scripture, and it's a conversation that happens between Mary and the angel Gabriel. It's Luke 1, 31 through 35. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Listen to that word, overshadow, that's important. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. So that word overshadow, it means to cover with the cloud of God's glory. This is the same cloud of glory that the Israelites saw in the wilderness. It says that during the day, they followed a pillar of cloud and during the night, they followed a pillar of fire, the glory, the presence of God. This is the same cloud that filled Solomon's temple multiple times. And now the glory of God Almighty is about to rest upon a young girl, causing her to become pregnant with the Messiah. They say that Mary was about 16 years old and and Gabriel spoke to Mary and said, the power of the Most High is going to overshadow you and you will conceive. You will become pregnant with the Messiah. So what was it about Mary that she was the one that was going to be chosen to be overshadowed and give birth to God's son? I mean, we know that she fulfilled the prophetic requirement being from the lineage of David, but what else was there? You know what it is? It's found in the quality of Mary's heart. Listen to the last words that she spoke to Gabriel. It's in Luke 138. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. There are two important statements that Mary says that firmly decided the outcome. First is the statement of submission. She said, I'm the Lord's servant. He's God, not me. And if he has chosen me, then that's good enough for me. I will obey. 
You see, I was recently on this flight from Spain to France, and it was some unknown airliner. I've never even heard of, of the company before, and it was kind of a small plane. And so we're up in the air, and we've already taken off, and we're cruising, and the stewardess begins to come down the middle of the row offering drinks. And so the stewardess gets to me and says, sir, would you like some water? I'm like, yes, of course, that'd be great. And as I turned around to go grab the water from the stewardess, they were waiting there for me to receive my payment for the water. Now, I was surprised because I've never paid for water on an airline, but it was at that moment that I realized that I'd become a little bit spoiled or a little bit entitled by flying on Delta or Southwest or all these other airlines that give you free water, free snacks, free drinks, and it's just not like that on every airline all across the world. But we have to be careful as believers that we never get this entitled attitude with the Lord. You know, as his children, we enjoy many blessings in Christ. If you're a believer today, you know about the blessings of God in your life. But in humility, we need to remember, just like Mary, that we are grateful servants. Are you with me today? We're his servants. All right, now let's look, listen to the second statement. It was Mary's statement of belief. She said, may your word to me be fulfilled. I love what Corey Ten Boom said. She said, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. So Mary thought, I don't know how this is all going to play out. I mean, this is a lot for me to handle. I don't fully understand the process. This is risky. When I tell people I'm pregnant by the Holy Spirit, I could be called crazy. I could be called a lunatic. I could be divorced from my, my betrothed husband, right? I could be kicked out of my father's house because he may not believe that I'm pregnant by the Holy Spirit. But there is one solid thing that I do know. And that's who God is. It's who God is. And he is more than enough. Mary believed. She had faith, right? And the Bible says that signs and miracles will follow those who believe. Mary's faith released miracle power into her life. And her statements of submission and belief were all God needed to hear. The declarations gave God glory. They gave him glory. And then he in turn overshadowed Mary with his glory. He overshadowed her and the Holy Spirit enabled her to conceive and give birth to our Savior. So remember, our God, in fact, I want you to right now say, my God, because he's personal to you and to me, he brings supernatural life, just like he did in Mary. He's the miracle worker and our God does great things through the life of believers. Believers. Secondly, the Father speaks from glory affirming the ministry of his son. So we're going to jump now to Luke chapter 9, 30 through 35. Jesus is, you know, right in the middle of his public ministry here. In fact, he's getting near the end and he takes his three closest disciples with him up on a hill, Peter, James, and John. They go up on this hill. They go up to pray. Jesus begins to pray. And during this process, his, his face begins to just shine. And that's where we pick it up here in Luke 9, 30. It says, behold, two men were talking with him, with Jesus, and they were Moses and Elijah, who appearing in glory were speaking about his departure, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Now, Peter and his companions had become overcome with sleep, but when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who were standing with him. And as these two men were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's good that we are here. Let's make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not realizing what he was saying. But while he was saying this, a cloud formed and began to overshadow them. And they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And then a voice came from the cloud saying, this is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. You see here, high up on a mountain, we see another overshadowing moment take place. We know that the Holy, the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary, empowering her to conceive. And now the, the overshadowing moment comes again through the cloud of God's glory. This is the same thing. The glory appears and a supernatural event follows. And this time, the event is the audible voice of the Father speaking, affirming the Son. Now, why is this so important? Why does this happen? Well, this is a moment of great importance for the disciples to understand. But at the same time, they seem a bit distracted. For one, while they were supposed to all be praying, the disciples were found sleeping. They were found napping. And then once they woke up from their nap, Peter said, Hey, look, there's Elijah. And look, there's Moses. 
And as they began to leave, it says, as Moses and Elijah began to depart from Jesus, there's this longing from Peter to keep them there. There's this focus upon Moses and Elijah, but the real focus should be on Jesus. So that's when the Father appears, and he comes in his cloud of glory to speak and to make things very clear. He said, only Jesus is my son. This is my beloved son. And then he says, he's my chosen one. Not only is he my son, he was my, he's my chosen Messiah. So he is the one you should be focusing on, not Moses, not Elijah. They don't matter. You can get to know them once you get to heaven. Right now, while you're here on earth, you need to be focusing on my son. And you know, we have this problem too. Sometimes we get distracted. Sometimes we focus on the things that don't matter in life. I mean, We're in the Christmas season, right? You could be scrolling your phone, you know, doing some Amazon shopping for your kids, buying them presents. And then next thing, I don't even know how it happens, but you go from Amazon to Facebook to Instagram and you're scrolling and you're scrolling. And then all of a sudden you look up and the football game came on. And three hours later, the game's over and your friend calls you and say, hey, let's go out, let's go do something. And so you go to the movies and finally, at the end of the day, you get home late, right in time for bed, And the only time you talk to Jesus is to say, good night, Jesus. This happens. But the Bible says, fix your eyes upon Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. Fix, not glance for a moment, fix. Don't look away. Keep your gaze upon him. Think about him. Focus upon him. Talk to him. Worship him. Put him first in your life. He is the author and perfecter of our faith. And so we have to be diligent in making sure that we don't get distracted like Peter did. And then the father says, listen to him. Listen to him because it's very important. He said, the teaching of my son is superior to that of Moses who represented the law, right? And it's superior to the teaching of Elijah who represented the prophets. In fact, all of the prophets prophesy to predict the coming of Jesus, the coming of God's son. So Peter, don't focus on Moses and Elijah. Focus on Jesus and listen to his teaching because his is superior. You know, sometimes we don't listen to the right things. We're not opening our ears to what God has to say. We're opening our ears to everything else. Gossip, political garbage on the TV or in our news feeds. Narcissistic narcissistic celebrities, I'm sorry, that have absolutely no, no value to us. Why do we even watch some of these reality TV shows? I mean, they don't add any value to our life, but for some reason they get our focus. Or there's even friends or family members who could care less about our spiritual growth. Some of them are toxic. Stop. Stop listening to them. The father says, this is my son. Listen to him. Listen to him through the word, through prayer, through gathering together with other believers. Listen to my son. So Jesus, as the promised seed of Abraham, came to establish a new covenant through his blood. And this was going to happen in about 40 days from this transfiguration moment. Because the next time that Jesus was going to go up a mountain, he was going to go up a different mountain. But the name of that mountain was Golgotha. And this is the place where Jesus would be nailed to a cross where his blood would be shed, making the atonement for sin once and for all, for you and for me, where the power of sin would be broken. That is the next mountain that Jesus was going to climb so that he could give us a better covenant than the one that Moses brought, the one that we could never fulfill on our own. So this is the, this, the reason for the second overshadowing here, because the father spoke in glory, saying, don't lose sight of my son. Now, thirdly, this third part of of the scenario here of the promise of Jesus is that the fulfilled promise of Jesus brings lasting glory into our lives. 2 Corinthians 5.21, I love it, says this, For he made him who knew no sin, that's Jesus, to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Listen, this is the fulfillment of, of the promise given to Abraham thousands of years ago. God said all people from all nations on the earth who believe in this truth and who call on the name of my son will be blessed, blessed eternally, blessed with eternal life, blessed with the forgiveness of their sins. Jesus went to the cross in our place so that we wouldn't have to. He lived the righteous and perfect life in our place because we couldn't do it. And now the gift that he gives us, we don't deserve it. And we certainly can't earn it. It's the free gift of God's grace. 
given to all who will believe. There was a period in my life where I worked graveyard shift. And so because of that, I had to learn how to sleep during the day. And so during the day is a very noisy time and it's very hard to sleep during the day. In fact, I remember almost every time I went to sleep, it was like the landscapers would come and they'd be using their leaf blowers right outside of my window. And I was like, oh, of course, right when I'm trying to go to bed, the leaf blowers come. So I tried everything. I would try wearing masks. I'd try taking melatonin. I would try one of my you know biggest tricks was using these noise canceling headphones. And so I would put on you know some sort of music that was supposed to help me sleep. And that noise with the noise canceling headphone was supposed to cancel out all the other noise that was going on around me. But the reality is, is that noise is still noise. It doesn't matter what type of noise it is. And if you have noise in your life, you're still not really getting true rest. I never really got true good rest. And I was trying to sleep during the day with noise canceling stuff going into my ears. And so the same thing with us is that some of us try to find peace in every possible way. We try to focus on our image. Oh, if I just have, you know, nice clothes and, you know, I go to the gym and my body figure is good and I drive a nice car, you know, then I'm just going to have peace in my life. And some of us are overly focused on our careers. You know, that's just the thing that we seek after and we, we find significance in, you know, climbing up the ladder or our education. If I just get, you know, smarter and I get my bachelor's and my, my master's and then my doctorate, you know, then I'm really going to be valuable. Or for some of us, we find it in, in friends and entertainment. You know, we always have to be doing something with someone, you know, something exciting or else there's this void in our life. We become depressed. But the reality is, is all of these things, they're just noise. They're noise. They're not inherently bad. But if we're using these to try and bring rest and peace into our lives, it's still noise and it's not going to really bring, bre- bring rest to our souls. And I know you know that. Only Christ can give godly peace. Remember what the scripture says. It says that he made him who knew no sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ, the fulfillment of the promise to Abraham. So in conclusion, another promise was fulfilled through Jesus. Isaiah 9-2 says this, the people walking in darkness say that's me right now. Yes, we were in darkness, all of us at one time. The people walking in darkness, the darkness that we were just clouded from the deception of the world and the enemy before we knew Jesus, have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. A light has dawned. The great morning star, his name is Jesus. He is the light of the world. In him is no darkness. Our light has come. The darkness of this world flees from him. It can't stand to be around him. It can't contend with him. It is displaced by the light of Jesus Christ. And it's because he came that we, we, you and me, can bring hope to the world. The Bible says that Christ in us is the hope of glory. The glory cloud, the glory of God that overshadowed Mary, the glory that was there at the transfiguration and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, now abides within you and within me by the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's thank God for the miracle of the promise of his son today because he fulfills every promise. Now, right now, in order for you to receive the promise, There's one requirement. You have to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. You cannot receive the promise of eternal life. You cannot have peace and rest in your soul. You cannot have a life of purpose and fulfillment if you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Savior. But I'm going to give you an opportunity right now, wherever you are, all you have to do is stop what you're doing and pray this prayer after me, asking Jesus to come into your heart to forgive you of your sins. If you do it with an honest heart, if you confess with your mouth, you will be saved. You will be forgiven. So if that's you, do this right now. Repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. And with your help, from this day forward, I will live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I hope you prayed that prayer today. And if you did, I'm rejoicing with you. This is the start of your eternal life. So if this is you, click on the link in the description below and we're gonna reach out to you, helping you to begin to walk on God's path 
for your life. Now, if the sermon touched you today, I want you to help us out and just share it on your social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. Just make sure to support us and get the word out there in that way. Now, I have a couple of announcements for you. The first one is that Christmas Eve is upon us. It's going to be on the 24th. We're going to have services at 4 and 6 p.m., but you need to get tickets for this. There's going to be no service on Saturday. We normally have a Saturday night service on the 23rd, but there will be no service on that Saturday. There's not going to be a morning service on the 24th at 9.30, so just write that off the map, okay? But there will be Christmas Eve services at 4 and 6 p.m. Now, additionally, our office will be closed from 12.18 to 12.29, except for our Christmas Eve services, so keep that in mind. Now, we're wrapping up the end of the year here. We're in December, and so for all of those who are part of our giving team, uh, you need to know that if you're giving for 2023, it must be postmarked and received by 1231 in order to count for the 2023 giving year. Now, listen to this one. This one is very important. We are going to have a special all-church business meeting on January 10th at 7 p.m. Listen, if you remember, members, listen up. If you remember, you need to be at this business meeting. It is very important. We need your attendance. We need your participation. Again, on January 10th at 7 p.m., please make sure to put that on your calendar and be there with us. Now, I want to thank you for being great givers, great tithers. Thank you for your generosity. Uh, I'm very excited because soon we're going to be able to go out into Rita Cannon and just bless that school with gifts. I'm very thankful that time and time again, we're able to give the Convoy of Hope and just branch out just through your generosity. The church makes an impact in the kingdom. So here are the ways to give. You can go online to our website. You can text to give 84321. You can do it through the mobile giving app. You can do it right here in service. You can even mail a check to our address, 2100 El Rancho Drive, Sparks, Nevada, 89431. Now, I know that you've been blessed today. So as always, let's declare God's truth over our lives. It goes like this. I am blessed. I have divine favor. I'm not alone. I'm a child of God. I am more than a conqueror. I put my trust in the Lord. I walk in the promises of God's holy word because God has a miracle for me. And remember, Crosswinds, we're better together. God bless you.